Hello, my name is Alexander Kerpis, and this is my recording for D253, Task 2, Values-Based Leadership. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexander Kerpis. You guys can call me Alex for short. I'm the new customer service manager, and I look forward to working with every single one of you. I've been in several supervisorial positions before, and I believe in looking after my team. During one of my previous jobs, I was actually a newly promoted manager from a different department, and I didn't, now, I didn't know any of my associates, many of whom were also brand new on the job as well. And I worked with every single one of them to create a growth plan for advancement and skill refinement. So if you're feeling intimidated or frustrated, don't worry, I'll work with every single one of you one-on-one -on -one to make you and the company as successful as possible. My vision in the new position is to provide excellence not only to our customers, but also to our employees as well, while innovating and growing the company as well as building up our fellow associate. So let's talk a little bit about self-awareness as well as emotional awareness. So emotional awareness is being able to recognize your own personal emotions as well as recognizing the emotions of those around us. So. As a team, I believe it should be very important to all of us to be aware of the emotions that we personally experience and what everybody around us is also going through. This is a very, very valuable asset to have. We should all strive to understand each other and to better our communication. So I want everybody to try to write down the emotions they experience while at work, depending on the different situations that you might be in. That way uh, we could better understand ourselves and potentially what others could feel. Being able to self-manage is one of the greatest assets that an individual could acquire, um, especially when talking about emotional self-control. So emotional self-control is actually less about controlling your emotions and more about not letting your emotions control you. I hope that as the customer service manager, I'll be able to show through my leadership what emotional self-control would look like and that it could have a top-down trickle effect on the rest of the company and the associates. We should all strive in our daily communication with each other and especially our customers to not let our emotions take away our control. So that way we don't end up saying things that we don't mean just because we're upset, tired, or any number of other emotions that we could be experiencing that day. Social awareness is also a very important skill to have, and that is the ability to put yourself in somebody else's shoes from a different cultural background. This is very important, and I want us to focus on this as a group, as we are all from different cultural backgrounds, different upbringings, and the same goes for our customers. They're very, very diverse, just like all of us, and we need to learn to empathize with them and with each other. So to better understand empathy, let's go over the three kinds of empathy. The first is cognitive empathy, which is understanding the perspectives or thoughts of another. Emotional empathy, which is feeling and sharing the experience of another. And then there's compassionate empathy, which is understanding and being moved to action. So this could just be something as simple as hearing someone out whenever they're having a tough day or they're complaining about something, especially with our customers if they're unhappy. Just being compassionate and putting yourself in their shoes and hearing them out can be a very, very kind gesture towards them. Let's talk about the different kinds of biases that one might have. So the first one is unconscious bias, which is prejudice or preconceived notions of someone or a group of people. Usually it's when you show favoritism towards one group versus another. It's important to be self-aware of these biases, especially in the, work in the workplace, as we are all different, like I said earlier, and the same with our clients. Your bias might actually not be noticeable until you start to dig deeper. And that's why I want everyone to carefully self-reflect every day to try to understand where we are biased and try to get rid of them as this can cause major disruptions in the workplace. Now let's talk a little bit about cognitive bias. The first kind of cognitive bias I'd like to discuss is confirmation bias. So confirmation bias is basically when you already have a preconceived notion of that's the way this is going to happen and you go 
only off of data that supports that fact. For example, if I were to give a performance review to somebody that I thought was a bad employee, I'd only look at the data that supported my opinion. Then there's also recency bias, and this kind of bias is when you only focus on data that happened in the past week, two weeks, maybe the last month. And going off my previous example, if I were to give a performance review to somebody and I only focused on the past three months of data versus the whole year, this would be recency bias because of something that happened recently. So let's talk a little bit about biases and decision making. So in order for us to make ethical decisions, we must not be swayed by any kind of biases. And being biased towards a certain group of people could lead towards making unethical decisions which would harm both parties. For example, if I was biased towards uh, foreign individuals, assuming that they are very hardworking and I would only promote them, that would be unethical on my part because everybody should have an equal opportunity to be hired. And just because I have a preconceived notion that somebody that's an immigrant would be a hard worker doesn't necessarily make it true, and this would be unethical. Relationship management is, on a basic level, the way we all interact with each other and our surroundings. There needs to be ethical relationship between the employees and their employers, between co-workers and managers. Most relationships are based on trust, integrity, and mutual respect. If one or <clears throat> all of those values are broken, the relationship will definitely be damaged. And as a manager, I will do all in my ability to create and sustain value-based relationship with all of my colleagues and coworkers. I would like for there to be a trickle-down effect on our organization so that everybody would feel like ethical behavior will be encouraged and rewarded. Now let's talk about the type of culture we would like to cultivate in our environment. I would like for there to be a culture of care in our work environment and our company as a whole. In order to do this, we would need to have the leaders focus on caring about the employees, the employees caring about each other, and the employees also caring about the customer and everybody caring about the mission and vision of the company. In order to do this, first, we must act ethically and treat each other with respect. With a culture of care, everybody's relationships are much more meaningful and everybody should feel like a valued member of society and a valuable piece of the puzzle. Because if you lose just one piece of a puzzle, it will be incomplete. So the corner piece will be just as important as the middle piece of the puzzle. As I'm wrapping up our first meeting together, if you didn't remember anything from this presentation, let me just leave you with this last piece of information. So emotional intelligence is very important and the ability to recognize, understand, pay attention to, and manage your own emotions and the emotions of others is very difficult. So I would like for us as a team to focus over the next few months on self-awareness to make us more effective as a team. Let's practice emotional awareness and self-control daily with having a daily recap of your emotions and of those around you. And by doing so, we will ingrain this into our own being and we will do it without a second thought. And let me leave you with this one quote. It is a Latin proverb which says, repetitio est matter studiorum, which says, repetition is the mother of all learning. So that concludes our first meeting, and like I said earlier, I look forward to working with each and every single one of you, and if you have any questions, please come see me later. Thank you.